Let us uh, welcome to the stage, if we can, uh, Matthew Brito. Matthew is from Sandia National Labs, right? We got that right? That's correct. Based where? Uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You, fl do you, you walked here to keep your carbon footprint low? So We actually took the cart. It took three days. But <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're about to meet the cart. Let's take a look. What do you think of their video power? Is it the <laughs> how they do? Oh, I, I give them a definitely a thumbs up. <laughs> the first question I have is, why do you have 350 golf carts at Sandia? I wanted the same thing, actually. Uh, our site is fairly large, but uh, we have to utilize uh, carts to get people moving around the, the, the fairly large campus. Um, Sean, what do you think? Uh, you know, investment innovation. Uh... I think it's fantastic, and my immediate reaction is when you see exciting things happening like this at, at a federal lab, how can we now pair you with small businesses to take this and, and scale it and get, get products like this out in the commercial marketplace? Okay, so there's the question. Where does it go from here? Sure. Uh, next steps would certainly be in retrofitting all the existing carts on site. You see the 350 at Sandia uh, certainly could be expanded to all DOE complex or any site, basically. Um, they are off the uh, shelf designs as well as uh, solar panel and parts, so it could be very easily implemented elsewhere. So you started this? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of people involved, certainly. Um, my PV background, I started as an student intern in the PV group, so kind of had that, uh, that background and really been able to bring it forward to my other jobs. Ron, um, you know, HUD going to be running around on solar carts here anytime soon? We're confined to one building. Uh, but I do have this question. What did you learn? When you, what did you learn? Sure. Uh, certainly, actually, we learned a great deal. I, I thought I knew quite a bit about photovoltaics. I uh, did learn to downscale because we've done some larger systems, still fairly small, a couple kW uh, worth of energy. But it was definitely a learning experience to figure out how to scale it down to just eight PV cart to charge six gel sealed batteries and so on. So. Just a different mindset as far as scale. Okay, because we're a really connected audience, I have a question that may have come in from somebody's tweeting us a question here. Uh, can the Sandia PV carts be used for energy storage as well? Has this been considered for the 375 carts? Uh, the, actually, the, the batteries in the cart are the storage just for powering the cart. So as far as powering other elements, certainly it's just enough for the vehicle. Sean, my question would be if I'm thinking about this, Government going first, all right, because you've got the opportunity to do that. You've got the focus where you can do that. But if this is going to work and going out into the private sector and it's going to incentivize, there's got to be a market base for this, right? Is, do you, when you look at this, do you think uh, golf courts at every, you know, carts at every golf course and other places that are using technology? My mother was out in Sun City and half the old people there are driving around those golf carts. Yeah, so I, I think, first of all, I think you know, we've got to remember the power of the federal government as a, as a buyer and a consumer. Um, so especially in emerging technologies, the, the opportunity for the federal government to help drive the development of a marketplace by being a leader is incredibly important in any, in, in any sector, but particularly in, in these emerging sectors. Um, so you say, if there's a place for us to be first, it's more important than ever. Um, for small businesses trying to sell to the federal government, it's really hard, so we've got to take down the barriers. In this particular case, it looks like this is something, though, that uh, while we can replicate in the, the federal government, 
let's partner with entrepreneurs who can figure out a way to take the cost down to do this in a really broad, broad way. So I think there are additional opportunities, not just can the federal government be a buyer here. You jump if you want to, do you have something you want to say? Jump in? No, okay. I just wonder if the golf courses are going to be buyers. If it's a yeah. more green technology for the golf course, I can go and have a more sustainable experience on a golf course if it's if it's solar and with the battery storage connected. Then just can you do that? that? Can you can you capture that? For I mean, is this something that can be saleable? Absolutely. What's, what's, I mean, how do you monetize this? Right. Exactly. How They're do, off the shelf right now. Uh, parts for like a club car, for example, that was featured in the in the video. So certainly it's it's available right now. How much would it cost to, to roll it out to the rest of your fleet? It's approximately $2,500 per cart to be modified. Um, we're, we're finding that being a low cost considering the initial cost of the vehicle and the infrastructure required to put in charging stations that we currently have. So and so what's the payback time in terms of energy saved as It's result? actually immediate. Uh, what we're finding on our site, since we're on such an old site, we were, we were getting costs of approximately 10000 bucks to install a charging station per cart. So that is now offset by placing p a portable tax on the vehicle. So we no longer have that charging station. We can decrease the number of charging stations that are currently on site and uh, just not have to worry oh, about these, that. These costs, we're not at the marketplace yet. Uh, yeah. You know, the, how would you scale it up so, for instance, if you're in the West uh, and you have farmers, and our issue has been basically how do you reduce the energy costs for uh, agriculture? Is it, can, this be, can this technology work in regards to whether it's hauling hay, whether it is planting seed, whether it's the movement around a, a farm? Sure, and we, and we do have a variety of vehicle different types, so we do have a little more heavy duty uh, that can carry larger items. It's just going to be the scale, of course, so we would have to design it according to the vehicle size. Mayor Becker. Yeah, I want to see us apply this on our public golf courses. Lo you think of all the public golf courses out there and local governments, there's got to be a great opportunity there. <laughs> but I'm wondering also about bicycle fleets. Have you looked at bicycle fleets at Sandia as a, a way to get around? You've got great weather there. And yes, it's beautiful. Uh, Sandia is very <laughs> great. They have a bike commuter uh, club, so it's basically couple hundred members of Sandia are, are part of that organization and uh, they really try to encourage uh, carpooling and biking so yeah. biking's a, a large so, part I mean even within the facility I know that actually oh. some of our business in our Chevron refinery for example they've got a fleet of bicycles we've got one in the city for people who are wandering around within the facilities uh, yes get we, some around we certainly do do that in fact I have a department bike I, I don't actually drive that cart very often so <laughs> I utilize I just, I just want to know where you got the music it was a tough choice. We actually had some other choices that uh, we just really wanted to get things moving and get a little exciting. So. Okay, I'm going to go down the panel. We're going to let everybody have one quick word on the, either the content or the production value of your video. Then we're going to thank you and take a look at the next one. Very creative, and it got the message across. Oh, I, I go for the idea. We can apply it all over. I liked it a lot. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> no Simon Cowles here today. Thanks, Great. man. Thank you. Matthew.